Hi there, and thanks so much for tuning in. Today we're going to be looking at lesson 3.3, solving equations using addition and subtraction. Today in your notes, you're going to be looking for eight things to write down, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want you to just know about is the addition property of equality and the subtraction property of equality. Um, basically, you don't need to write these two things down, but I do want to make sure that you understand what they mean. It says basically when you add the number to both sides of an equation, it produces an equivalent equation. So for instance, if a is equal to b, if you added c to both sides, it would still be equal. The same thing is true with subtraction. If you subtract the same number to both sides, it'll still be equal. What we're trying to do is kind of show that. So whenever we see, and this is the, the part that you will write down here in the blue box, whenever you see addition, you're going to use subtraction to solve. And whenever you see subtraction, you're going to use addition to solve. So that's just going to basically undo any operation that we see um, to solve for a variable. Go ahead and take time now to pause the video and write down what's in the blue box, filling both of those blanks in. Once you're done, click play so we can move on. So these first two examples, you're just going to see how I do them. And then I'm going to give you several to try on your own and check with me. Um, the first one, it says, solve for x when x plus 2 is equal to 8. Going back to what we just wrote down, when you see addition, you will use subtraction to solve. The first thing you need to realize is what is on the same side as the variable, and that is what you're going to be taking away from the variable. You need to get everything away from the variable so that x or the variable, whatever it is, is by itself. Since 2 is on the same side of the variable, I'm going to get 2 away from it, by subtracting 2. I'm just doing the opposite of what 2 looks like. It's a positive 2, so the opposite would be a negative 2. If I do one thing to one side to make it equivalent, I've got to do it also to the other side. What I'm going to see here is I'm going to have a, pl a plus 2 and a minus 2, and those are actually going to cancel out. That is what we wanted. So all we have left now is x on the left side. What I'm, I'm noticing over here is I have an 8 and a negative 2, or 8 minus 2. 8 and negative 2 are going to make 6, so my answer for this problem would be x is equal to 6. I know that I can go back and check it if I just plug in 6 where x is. If 6 plus 2 is equal to 8, then we got the correct answer. For, num for the second one, again, we see subtraction, or we see a negative 2 with the x. To get the negative 2 away from the x, I'm going to do the opposite, which is plus 2. If I do plus 2 to the left side of the equation sign, I will also do plus 2 to the right side of the equation sign. Again, notice that minus 2 and plus 2, or negative 2 and positive 2, cancel out. So all I'm left with is x on the left side. And over here, I have an 8 and a positive 2. 8 and positive 2 make 10. So my answer should be x is equal to 10. Again, I can double check my work by plugging in 10 where x is equal to. If 10 minus 2 is equal to 8, then I've done the question correct. These next few ones you're going to see. So what I'm going to ask you to do is you're going to be trying these questions. Again, take note. Whatever your first step is you're going to use the opposite operation. And once you use the opposite operation, your final step will just be to solve, okay? So go ahead and just take the time to try both two and three. I'm going to ask you to just pause the video, click play when you're ready to check it. Okay, so for number two, I see z minus 6 is equal to 2. I notice that 6 is on the same side as z. To get the 6 away from it, I've got, away from the z, I've got to do the opposite operation here. So I'm going to do... A plus 6 because that's the opposite of a minus 6. Whatever I do to one side of the equation, I will also do to the other side of the equation to make it equal. Minus 6 and plus 6 cancels out, so all I'm left with is z. And over here, I have 2 plus 6, and I know 2 and positive 6 will give me 8. My answer for number 2 is z is equal to 8. Number 3, you did have to be um, pretty careful with number 3. Notice that I'm subtracting 7, or I have a negative 7 with p. So I'm going to add 7 to both sides to get 7 away from p. Those are going to cancel out. Oops, hold on. Once I notice that they cancel out, all I'm left with is the letter p on the left side. But I need to figure out what these are going to mean. I have a negative 3 plus 7. 
be very careful here because that doesn't mean 3 plus 7. It means negative 3 plus a positive 7. Using your integer rules, I know that if I have different signs, I have to subtract, and then I keep the sign of the larger value. So 3 take away seven, from 7 would be 4, and my answer would be a positive 4 because 7 is my largest value and it's positive. So my answer for number 3 is going to be P is equal to 4. Again, you can check your work by plugging in 4 where P is. Is 4 take away 7, negative 3? It is because if I do 4 plus negative 7, or adding the opposite, I still get negative 3. The next two you're going to try on your own as well. Same type of um, rules here. Show the opposite operation and then solve it. Go ahead and pause to try. Once you're done, click play. Alright, so for number 4, I see y plus 10. The opposite of plus 10 would be minus 10, so I'm getting that 10 away from the y. Whatever I do to one side, I will also do to the other side. Notice I have here crossed off or canceled out the plus 10 minus 10, so all I have left is y. But now I have this thing over here, negative 5 minus 10. Another way to look at that, negative 5 minus 10 is also the same thing as negative 5 plus negative 10. So you're basically just adding the two negatives together. What is negative 5 and a negative 10 going to give you? That's going to give you a negative 15. So y is equal to negative 15 for number 4. Number 5 was just switched around, but still notice that 7 is being added to b to get negative 1. To get 7 away from that, I'm just doing, I'm just going to do the opposite of what's happening to that 7. I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. These 7s will cancel out. So all I'm left with is b. And then now I have to think about what is negative 1 minus 7. Negative 1 minus 7 is the same thing as negative 1 plus negative 7. And that's going to give me negative 8. So my answer for number 5 is b is equal to negative 8. The last little bit, um, these are just going to be two additional examples, and then I'm going to show you a word problem. Again, go ahead and pause the video. Once you're done, click play. These are simple, be even though they have decimals and fractions in them, you still have the same means that you can do this. So go ahead and try it. All right, so number six, we are subtracting. So I'm going to subtract 3.2 from both sides, or sorry, 13.2 from both sides to get my answer. These 13.2s will cancel out, so now I'm left with W is equal to 10.4 minus 13.2. 10.4 minus 13.2 is the same thing as 10.4 plus negative 13.2. Notice I have different signs, so I'm going to subtract. So I'm going to put 13.2 on top, 10.4 on the bottom, because 13.2 is larger. Can't do 2 minus 4, so I'm going to borrow. 12 minus 4, though, is 8. 2 minus 0 is 2. I'm going to get 2.8, but the 2.8 will need to be negative because my larger value, 13.2, is also negative. Number 7, I see x minus 5, 6 is equal to negative 1, 6. To solve this one, I'm going to do the opposite of minus 5, 6, and I'm going to add 5, 6. These 5, 6 will cancel out, so all I'm left with is x. This should have been pretty simple because you have common denominators. The, notice, though, you do have two different signs, negative 1, 6 plus 5, 6, different signs subtract. So I'm going to subtract those. I'm actually going to do 5 minus 1, and I'm going to get 4 over 6. And I do need to simplify because making sure that all of our fractions are simplified as our answers, that's going to give me 2 thirds. So 2 thirds is my answer for number 7.